Okay, um, today we're looking at graphs of functions in two variables. Um, a graph of a function in two variables are simply when we have two unknown variables that are linked together by an equal sign, i.e. that are linked through an equation property. Um, let's take for example this right here, um, 3x minus um, y is equal to 2 right here. And <coughs> first things first right here, this is called the standard form of a line. In the standard form, you have right here your x term and your y term on the same side, equaling to a constant, a number without the variable right here. And the x term is always positive. And there's nothing that divides between all three of that can be divided out to simplify the expression. When we have that, we have an expression in standard form. Um, the key thing that we like to do right here when we have this equation right here to better understand it is to actually graph the function. And so, how do we graph this function? Well, the first step is to solve for y, or make y the, um, or make y the dependent variable. And so if I have my 3x minus y is equal to 2, Algebra says I can subtract 3x from both sides, or simply move 3x over. So you have negative y is equal to negative 3x plus 2, and then I can divide by negative 1, or multiply by negative 1. And so let's go ahead and just um, divide by negative 1. And then that leaves me with the expression that y is equal to 3x minus 2. Now that I have that right here, I can create what is called a table of values where we choose values for x, our independent variable, and that gives us values for y, our dependent variable. And then we use those to plot on the x, y axis. And so we write our equation, y is made up of 3 times an unknown value times 2, and then we have a set of those unknown values. I like choosing simple numbers, so I will go from negative 2 to 2. Again, x because x is independent, that means it doesn't matter what number we choose for x, the values of y we get will automatically be correct. And so what I do is I take the negative 2 and I plug it into the expression. So that's 3 times negative 2 minus 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8, and that's negative 8 right here. And so that gives us what we call an ordered pair of negative 2, negative 8, which we can then pinpoint on the xy plane. When I plug in negative 1, I get negative 5, plug in 0, I get negative 2. Um, you can also go ahead and verify these on your own, since I'm not working them all out. Plug in 1, you get 1, and then plug in 2, and you get 4. With those right here, I can go to what's called the Cartesian coordinate plane, which is two number lines that are at right angles to each other. The first number line that goes horizontally, we call the x-axis. And we have 0 in the center, and then we go 1, 2, 3, we count outwards from there. And then we have negative values in the opposite direction and then the vertical axis the one that's going up and down we call that the um, the y-axis and your y-axis uh, um, again up here will be one two three four five six seven eight one two three four so all the numbers that I'll need and then the other direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All of these are negative. Um, negative 2 is right here. 3, 4, 5, negative 5 is right here. Again, I don't need every single number. I just need numbers that I actually need to post. Now that I have this right here, I go ahead and I plot the points. Negative 2, negative 8 is right here. Negative 1, negative 5 is right here. Um, negative 2, 
zero negative two is right here um, one comma one is right here and then two comma four is right here if I have done this properly all of these numbers should fit a simple pattern that pattern is what we call a line and that is the shortest distance between two points in the Cartesian plane and so right here we go ahead and we graph this just this point right here we call this the graph of the function y is equals to 3x minus 2 <coughs> now the interesting thing is that most people don't recognize what a graph is a graph isn't simply a line a graph actually is what we call a collection of solutions It is the collection of all solutions that satisfy the given equation, y equals 3x minus 2. So what that tells us, tells us right here is that if I go back to this graph right here, and I plug in the number 2 right here, then my answer is going to be 4. Those two right here fit the equation. By plugging 2 right here, my answer is going to be 4 right here. And so we call that a solution to the equation. <clears throat> the interesting thing is that it does more than just those obvious points. Take, for instance, the point 1.5 right here. If I plug in the point 1.5 right here, I go up to this point right here, I will note that the y-coordinate at that point is 2.5. Well, guess what? If you plug in 1.5 into this equation, the answer you will get is 2.5. What our graph is, every single point on here is the answer to plugging the x with the given y. Just by drawing this line right here, we've done an infinite amount of work in an instant. And that's the power of a graph, is because it is mathematically viable because it contains all the information uh, that is reflected by this equation. The difference is we can see those answers because the graph is a visual concept as opposed to just looking at um, the key numbers 3 and negative 2. Now there are several ways of graphing a function. The table of values is the most simplest way to graph a function. The second way of graphing a function is by using what are called the intercepts of the graph. If I look at the picture of the graph I just drew a while ago, the graph looks something like this. This right here is my x-axis. This right here is my y-axis. This point right here, where the graph meets the x-axis, is called the x-intercept. Because it is where the graph intercepts the x-axis, or meets. Because I guess x meets point is not, not as good, it doesn't roll off the tongue. And this point down here, this point is called the y-intercept. The key thing to understand about the intercept, or the key thing to take away about an intercept, is that whenever we are in an intercept, we're automatically given a free piece of information. If I look at the y-intercept right here very carefully, I will note that this point right here has an x-coordinate of 0. Don't know what the y is. The y-value is some number down here. But I know that the x is definitely 0. Similarly, if I look up here at my x-intercept, I will note immediately that the y-value is 0. I don't know what the x is, it's some number over here, but I know that the y-value is 0. And that is the most important rule. When you are at an x-intercept, you know that y is equal to 0. When you are at a y-intercept, you automatically know that x is equal to 0.
Okay. Notice right here that it is the opposite letter. That's how I remember them. Uh, it is the opposite letter that's zero. <coughs> the nice thing about finding our intercepts is that zero is a nice number to work with. So let's go back to our equation right here. So um, the original equation, well, it doesn't matter which equation you use. Let's use this one right here. My equation right here is y is equals to 3x minus 2. If I want to find the x-intercept, that means y is equals to 0. And so then 0 is equals to 3x minus 2. And this is a two-step problem to solve. To get to x, I first must add 2 to both sides. So I go plus 2, plus 2. So 2 is equals to 3x. And then I have to divide by 3. Divide by 3. As so I get x is equals to 2 thirds. And so the coordinates of the y-intercept, of the x-intercept, sorry, is 2 thirds comma 0. Similarly, if I want to find the y-intercept, that means I need to make x equal 0. And so then that's going to be y is equal to 3 times 0 minus 2. So y equals negative 2. That's not easy. And so my y-intercept will be 0 comma negative 2. <clears throat> to graph my function, I just plot those two points and recognize that my answer is a line, and that's all I need to graph the function. So negative 2 right here, that's my first point. That's my y-intercept. This right here is 1, so 2 thirds is somewhere around here. And with that small amount of work, I have the graph of my function. <clears throat> Now, interestingly enough, intercepts are a key point and graphs are a key point. And so throughout the semester, you'll be getting questions about finding those two points. So it's key to get in, get in the head. If I'm looking for the x-intercept, y is 0. If I'm looking for the y-intercept, then x is equal to 0. Now... We need a little bit of practice of finding our intercepts, especially for more complicated graphs. So let's say I have a um, 2x minus 5y is equals to 15, and I want to find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So the x-intercept y equals 0. So then that's 2x minus 5 times 0 equals 15. 2x equals 15, so x equals 15 over 2. And that's my x-intercept. Now, it is important to note that, technically speaking, if I ask you to find the x-intercept, this is an acceptable answer. Because it's well understood that if I'm looking for the x-intercept, y is 0. So if you just tell me that the x-intercept is 15 over 2, I can assume that you automatically know that the y coin is 0. After all, you had to plug in y equals 0 to find the point. And so sometimes this right here answer is just fine. <coughs> um, similarly, your y-intercept, um, x is 0, and so that's 2 times 0 minus 5y equals 15. Negative 5y is 15, so I divide by negative 5 y is equal to negative 3. Again, that answer is acceptable, or you can give it as the ordered pair. Just be careful to check to see what they're asking for. <coughs> um, let's say I have y is equal to x squared minus 16. Um, to find the um, x-intercept, I got to make y 0. So 0 is equal to x squared minus 16. I add 16 to both sides. So I get that um, x squared is equal to 16. And then I take the square root. And you have to be careful to not make the mistake. The square root of a number has either no answer or two answers. The square root of 16 is actually plus or minus 4. And so this graph actually has two x intercepts, which indicates that this graph is curved. This is a quadratic equation. We get it in more detail later on, but this right here will be a curved graph. And so, of course, I have two x-intercepts. 
There actually is a second way to solve this problem. If I have your x squared minus 16 is equal to 0, I can factor the problem instead. It factors into x minus 4 times x plus 4. Hopefully you know that this was called a difference of squares. Have a difference and both terms are perfect square. And then once you have that right here, you get x minus 4 is equal to 0 and then x plus 4 equals 0. So x equals 4 and x equals negative 4. The same two answers we had before. Interesting, right? More than one way to get to the right place. Get to the right answer. Finding the finding the finding the y intercept is often easier. So y um, intercept is x equals zero. So y is equal to zero squared minus sixteen. So y equals negative sixteen. Look at that. 0, comma, negative 16, and that's my y-intercept right there. No fuss. Uh -huh. The last example, um, is one that looks the same, but has different answers. If I have y is equal to x squared plus 25, and I want to find the x-intercepts, I have to make y 0 again the opposite letter and so I will have that 0 is equal to x squared plus 25. I subtract 25 from both sides and so I get x squared is equal to negative 25 and then I take the square root, I take the square root and I get x is equal, oh wait a minute, what is the square root of negative 25? That's right, there is no real answer. The answer in our physical world does not exist. There is no number that if I multiply it by itself, I'll get negative 25. And so because of that right here, I have no answer. On the other hand, find the y-intercept. Again, I'm just making x equals 0. And so I will have that y equals 0 squared plus 25. And so I will have then that y equals 25. So this right here is 0, 0,25. If I was to graph this last function right here, just to highlight the point right here of the no x intercepts, I get a graph that looks like this. This point right here is 25. Notice it does have a y, y axis intercept, but it does not meet the x axis. That's why we're getting no answer right here to our problems. We got many problems, but we got no help. Really sad, really sad. Mm -hmm. In the previous question, if I was to graph this one right here on the other hand, negative 16 is right here, negative 4 is right here, and 4 is right here. And as you can see, when you graph the function, it goes through every single point. Whenever you have a curved graph, to graph the function accurately, you need to make a table of values. I'm just familiar with the, the use that create um, problems, and so I can make a simple sketch of my answer. <clears throat> Last thing to note is that we can kind of give you this problem, but in reverse. I can say, well, well look at this lovely graph right here. And I say that this right here is negative 5, this right here is 3, this right here is 4, and then this right here is 8. And I can ask you to find the intercepts. Very simply, you just read them off. This graph has three x-intercepts. It meets the x-axis three times. Of negative 5, 4, and 8. Or if you prefer, you can give them as ordered pairs. And it has only one y-intercept right here. And so that is 3. Or again, you can give it as an ordered pair as 0, 3. Thank you.